Hi everyone! So I have two fun projects to share with you today. I'm going to show you how to make these Christmas gnomes cards using either some products from Simon Says Stamps or I'll show you another version using some products from Mama Elephants, both of which were released in the fall of 2020. So let's get started with the Simon Says Stamp version. So I'm going to be using some products from their Make Merry release. This is the Art Deco Hat Gnome um, die. So I have cut out the pieces here and we have this background piece that we're going to place all of our die cuts on top of. And I'm going to start with the beard and the nose. So these are the only areas that we're going to color in with Copic markers. So I am just going to draw in some hair texture with my Copic markers using a warm gray three warm gray five, and then I think warm gray one. You can also make a cool gray version of this, a neutral gray version, any color that you like. You just need a minimum of a contrasting color and a, a highlight shade, and that should be good enough to get you a nice um, grayish or whitish beard, depending on your preference. So I'm just using flicking motions from the bottom of the beard towards the middle, and then from the top of the beard, towards the center and then that's kind of how we get that nice hair texture. I'm just using the tip of the Copic marker here and I'm just doing my coloring on top of this piece of scrap paper just because I'm using a craft mat and I didn't want to stain the craft mat with the alcohol ink. So that's um, why I have that scratch paper down. And then once it, I think I have a good blend to the beard and the mustache, we'll move on to the nose. And I'm just going to add some E00 to the nose and then make it a little bit rosy with some R21 just along the top there. And then maybe a little R00 to make it even rosier. Now I'm going to move those aside and I like to start doing my paper piecing with the mustache because you get that little, um, that little piece to follow the little, like how, how would you say like, um, a little marker to follow. So if you match up the tips of the mustache on the back piece of the die with the little die cuts, that will help you to figure out where you're going to place all the other pieces for um, this little gnome. I try to work it from the bottom to the top. So starting with a shirt and working my way up, but the placement wasn't perfect. So I found that this was really the best way to get all the pieces in the right spot is to first um, line up the that mustache with the little edges on um, the the back piece and then build up and down from there that that was how I was able to get the um, all the pieces to line up right okay so I'm just gonna add a little bit of liquid glue to each of my pieces and then just pop them in so they're all touching and that looks good to me I am going to do the nose next and I'm gonna pop the nose up on a little piece of foam tape here and if you hear some background noise, just pardon that the um, landscaper is outside mowing the lawn. <laughs> um, and now I'm going to add down the little sides of the beard to the, the edges of the nose there. And then once I finish with that, then we can kind of add on his little shirt or his tunic. And I cut all of my pieces out ahead of time. So I think one of the keys to making this die cut work is to just kind of do a mise en place, right? And have all of your pieces together before you start and some plan as to how you want to arrange the pieces. Um, I also found that it was helpful to add this little hat backing to the top of our um, the overall piece. You could also use this hat if you wanted to just have a hat without all the art deco decoration to it, you could just have a solid colored hat there. Um, but it's also helpful to put that piece down if you're going to have an art deco hat and then arrange all the pieces on top of that piece because you'll get a better placement than if you were just to place it onto the, um, the backing there. Because I don't know if you can see, but there's maybe about an eighth of an inch um, that the backing is wider than that hat and that can kind of mess you up if you're just trying to apply 
the hat pieces to the backing without having this extra guide of the um, solid colored hat. Um, and then another thing that I did to make this die cut just go a little bit easier was I kept um, the entire white cut out and I just put it to the side of me so I could follow along so I could figure out where the pieces went. If you just try to use the die cut itself, it's not going to be helpful because it's in reverse. So because this is, there are so many little pieces here and they're all different shapes, kind of like a puzzle, it's best to just look at something head on. So that's why I did go and just put that little, um, you know, the little white die cut to the side there just so that I can make sure that I knew which pieces kind of went next. It was kind of like a guide for myself. Um, and now we're going to go into the little stripes here. So this was probably the most difficult part of lining up the hat. But again, if you have the little guide next to you like I do with my little white hat, that will help you to figure out which pieces go where. Um, and I'm using just a really, really, really thin amount of glue here so that it doesn't peek out from the edges of those little tiny pieces. Um, and then for this last part of the hat, I found the easiest thing to do is to just line everything up in the order I was going to set it out and then just really, really quickly add it on to just um, one little stream of glue there. And then there it is. So here is our Art Deco hat gnome. He's so cute and he is going to be the star of the show on our Christmas card that we're going to make. All of these are Simon Says Stamp products. So like I said, this is the Art Deco hat gnome, so you could use him. He would also be really, really fun to use for Halloween with those little stars. You could maybe use some black and purple and orange color scheme maybe to make a little Halloween gnome. Let's just take one last look at him. And now for the background, we're going to use the snowflake stamp from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm just stamping it with Versamark ink and then I'm going to take a piece of ice blue or sky blue um, cardstock and just rub that down onto my stamp to get a good impression. I'll lift it up with my reverse tweezers. This is a six by six stamp so we are going to cut away some parts of it. We're not going to use it all and I'm going to use iridescent embossing powder for this or holographic embossing powder by Ranger. I bought this I think when I first started making cards about three years ago. Is it three years now? Maybe four years. And um, I just thought this would be a good occasion to kind of break that out. So I'm going to go over the entire background with my heat tool. And as you see, we're going to get this really clear, pretty, iridescent, holographic look to our design. It's going to look nice and frosty and, and just crystal-like. Um, it's going to be a perfect little um, a wintry background for our little gnome. So just making sure I'm getting a good impression here. But, you know, even if I didn't get the perfect impression everywhere, it's okay because it is such a subtle look. I am going to cut down that piece to an A2 size um, card size, or actually it's not. I think I used um, a, a die cut, a stitch die cut that was about a quarter of an inch shy or an eighth of, yeah, a quarter of an inch shy on all edges to an A2 a size card base. That is a fog colored card base that I'm using. And the focal panel is four inches by five and a quarter. And um, now we're going to take all these little ho, ho, ho die cuts. This is also one of the dies that's part of the Make Merry release from Simon Says Stamp. And my favorite colors for the season um, are turquoise and pink and um, green and red and I've been using them in um, a lot of my designs so I decided to cut out all the little letters in those four shades and then just arrange them um, in kind of a random pattern onto our little ho 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 so um, every letter is going to be a different color you could also do it if you wanted to have each ho be one color so you could have made this one all red, another all pink, but I just wanted to mix and match just to go along with the theme of this gnome with his crazy um, colored um, Art Deco hat. I just thought that this would um, match well with the rest of the design. So I'm just going to 
finish up gluing all of those down to our background. And I love that white background that you get from the die cut. It just gives it a really, really nice, clean look. And then once we have all of these guys cut out and glued down, we can assemble our card. But first, we're going to finish our sentiment with this vibes die. So I'm using some red card stock for the sentiment. And then for the backing, I'm using some holographic cardstock from Lawn Fawn. Simon Says Stamp also released some holographic um, cardstock as well for the Christmas season. So any that would work well. I just thought it looked really, really cool um, with the rest of this design. And I'm using some um, white glitter paper for the little snow um, background there that the little gnome is standing on. I'm going to arrange my little ho ho ho's all askew and then we'll add the vibes at the bottom and that is going to finish off our card um, with our little funky gnome and his little ho 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 vibe sentiment and we're going to add a little bit more of a design so I'm just making little white snowballs with my white nouveau drops here and I'm just going to place a few here and there in all different sizes just to um, give the card a little a little something extra. And that is going to do it. So that is our first version using the Simon Says Stamp products. And now we can move on to our version using the Little Gnome Agenda Stamp and Die from Mama Elephant. And we're also going to use the Oh So Jolly die from Mama Elephant as well as the birch tree background. So let's start off by coloring in our little gnomes and we are going to use a similar color scheme to what we use for our first card. So I'm going to start with those warm grays again for the beard and I'm going to use a warm gray five and a warm gray two and that looks pretty good to me. For these tiny little images they're about an, uh, an inch each you really don't need that many colors maybe you need like two colors for each of the colors you're adding so for this little green hat I'm just using YG03 and YG67 YG17 would work as well in, in lieu of YG67 there and then for the skin I'm using E21 and then a little R01 for the little highlight on the nose or to make it a little rosy for the reds, we're using R24 and R29. And then for the shoes, some E44 and E47. So, and then I colored in the center of that little wreath with some W7. Now we're gonna give this little guy a blue green hat. So I'm using BG01 and BG07. Um, after I made this card, I realized that it would have been really cool to give him a green hat because then it would look like there was a little Christmas tree um, on his hat instead of a, a hat. I guess he just had a little tree on his head um, with all those cute little lights um, that are encircling his hat there. So I think a green would be really, really cool there. So for our gnomes, we're going to use seven of the gnomes here. And I tried to pick the most Christmas Christmiest ones, Christmassy ones, I guess. Um, and then we're just going to color them all in shades of green, red, and turquoise, and then that warm gray for the beard. And that's going to kind of um, make up our color scheme here. Again, I am just loving um, red, green, turquoise, and pink this season. And now we're going to color in this little gnome who is carrying a gift, and he has a little holly decoration on his hat just so adorable and then we have this little guy here who's just kind of sitting down I guess watching all the other gnomes get ready for Christmas so we have our little wreath carrying gnome our little Christmas tree gnome our gnome bearing a gift our little sitting gnome and then next we're gonna color in the little gnome with the candy cane as well as the gnome holding the little greeting card there and I think that is it oh and then we're also going to color in this little gnome to the left of the sitting gnome with the little balloons because we're going to make it look like he is um, kind of floating up and away off of our design when we get there in a second
So I'm just um, randomly, I'm trying to use a random pattern here where there are just some have red shirts, some have green shirts, some have blue hats, some have green hats, some have red. I just wanted there to be a lot of variation here. Um, I didn't want it to look like they're all wearing kind of like the same gnome uniform, but rather just, you know, different versions of um, these three different colors. And then once we finish coloring in our seven little gnomes, we're going to add one final touch by adding um, some shading with a white gel pen or actually adding some highlights with the white gel pen. And because these images are so, so tiny, we're really not going to be able to do much more than just add little dots of highlight here and there. So if you're new to highlighting, this is a really good stamp set to try out because you don't have to worry about making the highlights into shapes. You just add little dots of color here and there. So it's a way to kind of get used to seeing like a little pop of color that the those highlights can bring. And I also add a little polka dot um, pattern to the hats on some of the gnomes and then onto the shirts on some as well, just to add a little bit more interest or overall scene. And I guess I was inspired by that Art Deco hat gnome from our first card with his funky hat. I thought some of these gnomes should have a little style as well with their little outfits. Okay, so now I'm going to take the die cuts and I'm going to arrange them over the appropriate gnome and then run it through my die cutting machine. You can also cut these out by hand or use a scan and cut, whatever you prefer. I just happened to purchase the die, so that's what I used here. And I just love how they how cute they are. And now we can move on to arranging or assembling the rest of our card. So I've cut out this oh so jolly die cut three times, twice on white and once on red. So to start, I am going to um, glue the two white pieces together. And I'm just going to glue them down one on top of the other. And then we are going to add the red layer on top of that and we're going to stagger it a little bit to one side so that you see some of the white peeking through. So it just looks like a really, really cool candy cane um, pattern for our sentiment. And I'll show you how that goes in a second. So for this first layer, just making sure that they are attached um, right um, up, and, uh, up against each other so that um, their edges all match. And then for this red layer, I'm just going to apply the adhesive to the back and a very, very thin line just right in the center of the sentiment. And then we're going to place it on top of our white sentiment and we're going to stack it to the side. And I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to take my reverse tweezers and just kind of arrange the whole thing. So it's a little bit off to one side and then I'll just press that down when I get a good placement. And that looks perfect to me. And by having the background white, if you do get a little bit of glue um, on the, the die cut, you won't notice because it'll be on the white layer. Okay, now for our background, I'm just using some pattern paper from Lawn Fawn. It's part of their um, new release from the fall of 2020. It's the fall with the fall paper pack. And um, I just love the turquoise color and those little white dots reminded me of snow. And then this is the birch tree forest background from Mom Elephant. And I just die cut that on a piece of white cardstock. I'm going to add my foam tape along the edges. And I had to cut my foam tape down quite a bit because those edges are really thin. They're maybe a, less than a quarter of an inch. And then once I have the... Um, foam tape applied to the corners. I'm going to attach that to our card base and then I'm going to add some adhesive just to the bottom part of our oh so jolly sentiment and then I'm going to place it in the lower right hand corner. Um, and if I added the adhesive to the oh so part of the sentiment it um, it might stick to the the background which would not be good because there are the um, trees are on a different layer than the background. So that's why I only applied adhesive to the um, bottom part of the jolly there. Okay, so now we're going to arrange our little gnomes. So we're going to have this cute, whimsical little scene where there are just tiny little gnomes all over the birch tree forest. So some are going to be hanging out in the branches. 
uh, one little gnome is going to be sitting right on top of our sentiment and then the other guys are going to be staggered all throughout the scene and then I just love that little um, gnome with the balloons in the upper right hand corner who looks like he's just kind of floating away. And then we're going to add a little bit more decoration to our sentiment. I'm just going to add some little polka dots down the center of our jolly. Um, and I'm going to leave the oh so alone. So just we have a little bit of pop on the word jolly there. And then that is going to finish off our design for the second Christmas gnomes card. So I would love to hear from you in the comments which of the cards that you like best. And I'd love to know what projects you're working on um, for this Christmas season. And that is all I have for you today, everyone. Let's take one last look at both of the cards that we made. And I will see you again soon in another video. Have a great day.